Hi and welcome to Travel with Carl. I'm Carl and my passion is travel and aviation. Come along with me as I fly from Granada to Barcelona on board of Euling Airbus A320. Let's go traveling with Carl. This is my first time flying a low cost carrier in Europe. I'm both excited to try a new airline but also worried about how am I going to gel with the LCC model. I know that sounds really snobby but truth be told I'm very attracted to my loyalty programs so branching out into an unaligned airlines let alone an LCC is a big move for me. Anyway let's see how this flight goes. To pop my LCC cherry in Europe, I arrived at the airport ridiculously early, mainly because the bus schedule between Granada and the airport was sparse, and I had the choice of either arriving 3 hours early or 50 minutes early. That gave rise to the prospect of me becoming one of those stereotypical EasyJet passengers, arriving late, missing my flight, and then blaming the airline. Does this sound like one of those airport TV shows of the early 2000s? That wasn't going to be me. I opted for the early option to avoid the pain of running late. Granada Airport is quite old fashioned in its appearance and seems rather underutilised with only 11 flights departing this day. Iberia fly from Granada to Madrid and Melilla. Vueling fly to Barcelona, Mallorca, Bilbao, Gran Canaria and Tenerife. Effectively each airline has a monopoly on the routes they both serve, which isn't surprising given Vueling is the low cost carrier of Iberia and they're both owned by AIG. There are occasional flights operated by Air Europa, but none of those were flying today. Given the high number of tourists that are in Granada, it surprised me of how little connections outside Spain are offered from this airport. I would have thought a Ryanair or EasyJet service to the UK would be well patronised. Alas, for the flights and services, the airport offerings are relatively simple. A small check-in area is manned for each flight and as well as a cafe before security. A nice breeze from outside flows into the seat I selected by the cafe as I waited for check-in to open for my flight. For security, I found the airside area of the airport was larger than I expected. There is a self-service cafeteria offering the usual suspects of wine, soft drinks, snacks, and a duty-free area, which every airport seems to have to have. Appealing to this aviation geek traveller, however, there are long benches along the window looking out onto the tarmac and the runway. Unfortunately, the blast screens block most of the view, but some view is better than none. A few steps through the duty-free area, there is more seating in front of the three gates that lead out to the walk to the tarmac. Overall, the airport is a functional airport that does its job, but lacks style or unique offerings. Shortly after the incoming plane landed and stopped at the stand, the boarding was called before passengers had finished disembarking the arriving aircraft. I guess this is efficient as they get the IDs and passports checked and funnel passengers outside to wait for the aircraft to turn around quickly. Vueling connect boarding in three groups. I'm in a group I'm not familiar with, being the last group, aka group three. For me this didn't really matter as I only had a small backpack and was one of the first to board in my group. There were no aero bridges and boarding is by stairs at the front of the rear of the aircraft. I boarded from the front and would luckily for me avoid a large group of passengers waiting to board from the rear. So much for group two priority. The red kick board on the stairs looked like red carpet had been rolled out for me to board my private jet. Maybe this low cost carrier thing isn't so bad after all. On board I was greeted by a friendly crew who welcomed me on board, at least I think they did, and it was all in Spanish. It was a pleasant change to find some staff on board who looked like they're actually interested in their job and actually were having fun. I found my row empty which allowed me to get a quick pick of the seats before getting into my window seat. The plane was quite full but as I boarded the seats around were still empty. Those quickly filled as the last passengers boarded and the seats filled up, with very few remaining seats empty. Being the only plane on the ground, we were able to depart from the gate under our own power. It was a short taxi to the western end of the single runway airport for a departure on runway 09 to the east. Like my last few flights, this was another tailwind departure. Maybe it's a Spanish thing as I can't remember my last tailwind departure in Australia, and yes, I'm a nerd, I always check the windsock before takeoff.
seatbelt securely fastened until the seatbelt sign has been switched off. We recommend you keep your seatbelt fastened whenever you are seated. When the seatbelt sign is switched off, you may use larger electronic devices. Please be careful when opening the overhead lockers. On the climb out, we made a slight turn to the left which provided a great view of the snow and ice capped Sierra Nevada mountains that provide the scenic backdrop to Granada. As we climbed beneath us, Granada itself was visible, but by the time we were over it, we were too high to make out the features. We made a few turns around the mountains, then climbed above the clouds heading north towards Valencia, and then over the coastline of the Mediterranean onwards towards Barcelona. The interior of the cabin is an all economy tip to tail in the usual 3 3 layout. The seats look very similar to the British Airway seats, albeit with what feels like a little less legroom. The similarities in the seat is unsurprising given they're owned by the same parent company as British Airways. At 173cm tall, I fit into the seat okay, although taller passengers might find it a tight fit. There is a lack of padding on these slimline seats and there's no recline, which the crew pointed out to the passenger in front. This isn't long haul, you'll be fine. Being a low cost carrier, you can pay to sit in one of the receipts with extra legrooms, but for 30 euros I gave it a miss. Though I didn't really need anything to eat or drink, I wanted to try the buy on board menu and get a taste of what's on offer, literally. I figured that one of the claimed benefits of flying an LCC is you get more choice in what you choose to pay for, rather than getting a snack or drink predetermined by some accountant in head office. The menu was both in the seat pocket and online, and was had a pretty diverse offerings. There were meal packs as well as snack packs and a decent range of drinks and individual snacks. I opted for the lemon and poppy seed cake and a white wine, which on reflection was not a really suitable combination. Both were nice enough on their own, but for the 9 euro price tag, the cake was really quite small and not the best quality. The wine was similar to what you get on any other airline in those cute airline sized bottles. I know it's better for the environment, but wine out of a paper cup should be illegal. Also, mixing wine with lemon and poppy seed cake should also be illegal, but that's 100% my fault. It's pretty quick and efficient and gave me something to do for the short flight other than film out of the window, which I love doing anyway. Again, the crew were really energetic and seemed enthused about their jobs. We begin our descent into Barcelona over the water, providing a nice view of the city from the right hand side of the aircraft on landing. We arrived in Terminal 1, which is the main terminal here. While well, generally, Schengen passengers don't need to go through any checks on arrival, due to that pesky thing with COVID, domestic and international passengers within the Schengen zone are sorted before entering the baggage hall. I assume this is to check that people have filled out the required form and went to Spain prior to their flight. That said, it's pretty much an honesty system to which lane you choose. I assume that's because airlines are checking these things before people board the flights. I was flying domestically, but no one checked to confirm that prior to entering the domestic side. Once in the baggage hall, the flights were still mixed, so I'm not sure how foolproof the system is of checking people and really must rely heavily on the pre-departure honesty system for the airlines checking. After collecting my bag, I made my way to the transportation area of the airport and found the airport shuttle bus. The blue hybrid rights go to the express to the city every 5-10 to 10 minutes and it's about 30 minutes faster than the train. There's a self-service kiosk to buy a ticket, but you get a lot of people lining up to buy a ticket from another staff member. About 30 minutes later, I was in the city and making my way for my Airbnb for my stay in Barcelona. This flight on fueling popped my low-cost carrier European Cherry, 
and I must say I kind of liked it. I liked the choice that I had when booking to pay for what I wanted instead of the one-size-fits-all approach. At the same time, I did miss the priority lanes, the no-risk baggage allowances, the lounge before the flight, and the feeling one gets by holding airline status. Or maybe I'm just a snob. I really appreciated the buy on board options and being able to pick what I wanted from a broad selection as I find those free snacks on legacy airlines are getting worse and worse as each year passes. I also like the convenience of flying direct to my destination. I know, I just said I preferred to fly direct, I must be unwell. Although given how friendly the crew were, it wouldn't have mined another sector along the way. I'd fly Vuli again providing the price was competitive. That's probably the only gripe I have, it's a bit hard to compare it with the LCCs, as often once you had the baggage and snacks, you're at the same price as luggage to carry anyway. Overall an enjoyable flight and was glad to have some overall an enjoyable flight and was glad to have tried something new and come away with a good feeling about it. So thanks for travelling with Carl and we'll see you again soon.